So a lot of people were wondering why my September income did not reflect what someone making $210,000 a year would make. And so there's a couple of reasons for that. Since I'm in my second year of work, I've actually gotten a better flow of things and I've picked up more overtime and made more in my second year of work than I did in my first year. So that's going to end up increasing my income. CNBC ended up going with my 2022 income because 2023 is not done. So we kind of went off what I made in 2022, which was $210,000. This year, I have gotten onto a different shift which gives me one day off in the week. And there's also been availability to pick up overtime on my one day off in the week. So I'm actually making more income this year than I have in my last year. So that's why my income looks more than it would look for someone making $210,000. Another thing is I actually took a vacation in July and August. And so I ended up picking up a lot of overtime in the next month because I felt like I was very much rejuvenated and ready to work after taking a two week off vacation in Europe and kind of having an amazing experience. So I did a lot of overtime that reflected in my September income. I was also part of the hurricane team in my hospital. And so because I was part of that, I was compensated for being available during an emergency in the state. So those are a couple of reasons why my income is higher than it typically would be in a month. I also spent a little bit more on travel than I would in a month because I went to Costa Rica with my boyfriend for his birthday. And I also ended up spending on an Airbnb because my lease is gonna be up. So that explains some of the discrepancies in my September income. I'm on track to make more than 2022. And that is an amazing feeling to know that I'm breaking my own records in terms of my income. And I'm super grateful that I am in the position that I am. Another thing in 2022, I was posting a lot more on YouTube. And in 2023, I kind of transitioned to working more overtime. I felt like I wanted to balance it out. There were a lot of times when I was posting on YouTube that I would actually not take up overtime opportunities because I wanted to get my YouTube channel going. And then in 2023, I kind of wanted to balance it out. And I felt like I had given so much to my YouTube. So now I wanted to do a little bit more for my financial goals. So I've kind of gone back and forth on spending time on my YouTube and spending time in overtime. And it's really hard to switch between the two sometimes because when I'm in the mode of working a lot at work, it takes a lot of energy sometimes to just go back into editing and producing videos. So I think I just got into a really big flow of taking overtime at work this year versus my YouTube creation. But I, I will have more time in 2024 to create YouTube videos, which I'm really looking forward to. But yeah, overall, it's just a back and forth for me to balance out my hobbies and meeting some of my financial goals that will put me ahead and, you know, hopefully bring me more time with my family and my loved ones in New York. So with that being said, I would really appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure you like because that just boosts up my channel for the YouTube algorithm. I put so much into this YouTube channel, so I would really, really appreciate it. If you're watching this video, if you like it, if you hit the like button down below and you tell me what you liked best, I'm gonna continue answering some questions, but please make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe if you have it. So I saw a couple of comments that were wondering what happens after CA? Is there anything that I can do to make more money? Is there an income ceiling? Is there a salary ceiling? So overall, I would say that there's a salary ceiling, but I will say that there are people that put in so much overtime in terms of the maximum income potential that I have heard of. I know CAs that I personally work with that had made over $400,000 in a year. And this is as a W-2 employee. I'll go into the 1099, but basically as a staff employee, they have made over $400,000 as a CA. Now that's way beyond what I could anticipate when I was looking into the profession. I know people who have done and worked in the field for over a decade who now have picked up a lot of different jobs because they are, you know, based in one location and they have networked and they have a lot of opportunities to pick up work. The highest number that I have heard for a W-2 staff employee is over half a million as a CA. Most of that money is from being a CA, but they also have a side job that also brought in a lot of income. So that person also got a, a salary increase recently. So they should definitely be over $500,000 again if they kept up with the number of hours that they did last year. I was just speaking about W-2 employees, but I have heard that one of my classmates is bringing in over $40,000 a month. And that is as a travel CA. They're kind of like a temporary worker and they're paid more hourly. And so they're bringing in $40,000 a month doing so. And that is as a 1099 employee. So I'm going to speak about that in a different video, travel CA and travel anesthesia opportunities. But for now, that's all I'll, I'll talk about in terms of that topic. 
but there's definitely the income potential. The individual just really has to put in those hours. The people that I know that work those hours typically have financial goals in mind that they're trying to achieve, whether it's financial independence or it's, you know, helping their family in some way. So to get to over $400,000, it definitely requires a lot of overtime consistently. For me, I am making over $200,000 and that is really comfortable for me. And there's people I know that decide not to pick up any overtime and just want to make their base salary so it comes down to the individual in terms of their priorities ultimately i'm trying to lead a balanced life where i enjoy experiences as i'm working as i'm living my life and i go back and forth between new york and florida so for me personally i don't think i have the time fully to put in all the hours that they do so ultimately it really does come down to the individual if you're someone that is really driven really loves the field, really has a goal that is motivating them. The income potential is there in the current CA market. I know of people that have started other businesses on the side. They do part-time CA work and then they do other businesses and I'm not sure how much they make through that, but that's a great thing about being a CA and working anesthesia and doing shift work. Some people choose to do two shifts a week and then put a lot of energy into their other business ventures. For example, people could be in real estate, people can be teaching in schools, people can have their recruiting businesses, etc. There's a lot of potential to really design a life that people want where they still work in anesthesia, but they can start their own business ventures, which is very commendable, very inspiring. So I also want to touch on one thing in terms of being a CA, in terms of the anesthesiologists I work with, they are compensated more in terms of their salary. But I always consider the fact that I'm working on a quicker timeline than if I had gone through medical school. So I try to keep my cost of living low and invest the rest because if I had gone through medical school, um, at this point, I would be ending my medical school journey. I wouldn't really have any money. So keeping that in mind, I think about keeping my cost of living low investing that money and taking advantage of the fact that I'm making a really great salary earlier than I would have been. And instead of spending that money, I think it's just wiser for me to invest it so that by the time I would potentially be graduating medical school, I'll put myself ahead financially and, you know, hopefully be one step closer to financial independence and work optional. Also something to consider is that residents are required to work a certain number of hours, but for me, it's more so an option for me to pick up those hours. And if I really want to live like I was in residency, I could put in a lot of hours as long as my work has that available and really put myself in a, in a great financial position. Ultimately, there's a lot of potential for CAs to put themselves ahead through putting a lot of hours and being compensated for that and investing early versus later in life. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Also check out my CNBC feature if you haven't already and stay tuned for part three of my reaction to my feature. See you next time.